Uh, welcome, everyone, uh, to the Thursday, March 21st edition of the Vancouver Power BI and Modern Excel User Group Meetup. Uh, my name is Ken Pulse, and uh, I am your host for tonight. So uh, welcome to the show. Uh, what we're going to be looking at today is we're uh, just getting started with our welcome and overview. We've got Tim Weinzaffel, and I hope I got that approximately right. Okay, good stuff. Uh, that's going to be talking about integrating Power BI with Power Ops and Power Automate in a bit. Uh, but first, we got a couple things to cover off. So the first one, of course, is a big thank you to our sponsors, uh, Skillwave.Training, the company that I run with Matt Ellington to teach you how to do better data modeling in Excel and Power BI and all kinds of good stuff there around business intelligence. Uh, if you haven't checked out our courses, you should definitely do so. Excel Guru is the parent company of Skillwave and also the uh, developer and distributor of Monkey Tools, my add-in to help you build better data models faster in Excel and audit those that you have in both Excel and in Power RBI. Our next meetups that we have coming up in a couple of weeks, we're going to be having Chris Newman is going to be joining us and he's going to be talking about Excel add-ins and the fact that Excel should do much more in this space. I uh, kind of tend to agree with that. I'm looking forward to this conversation as an add-in developer. Um, this kind of hits near and dear to my heart. And in a month's time, uh, we are welcoming the one, the only Joseph Yates is going to be coming to uh, talk to us about, man, I, I can't. I can't, dude. Glide into data using Python and Excel. So this is Joseph's title that he made. Uh, so we're going to be looking at some Python work in Excel. Of course, Python works in Power BI as well. Uh, but Joseph's going to be looking at what's happening in the Excel space in this particular one. So uh, both these meetups are open for RSVPs, so you can do so now. Um, just a quick note about Monkey Tools. What's new in Monkey Tools? Back on March 8th, uh, a couple of days before I went down to the summit, I released a brand new feature into Monkey Tools called the Modern Pivot Monkey. Uh, what this does is it allows you to actually take a classic pivot table and upgrade it to a data model backed version of the pivot table, which means that you can now start using DAX measures on your pivot tables instead of being stuck on calculated fields. You can do your data transformations with Power Query because we actually create the Power Query that feeds the data model from your original data source um, and allows you to expand the data model or model logic, enhance the analytic output, of course. Um, this is a really, really useful tool. This job for me, I don't do it often, but when I do, it usually takes me 15 to 30 minutes to go and audit the file and then start recreating everything. Uh, that job is now down to less than a minute in order to actually make it work, which is pretty nice. So if you do need this, it's a great tool. It's one of the pro features in Monkey Tools, uh, but it does work in a trial. So you can definitely check it out, go to monkeytools.ca to download a version today. Um, just a quick note that uh, the next semester, next kickoff date of my self-service business intelligence academy at Skillwave is on April 10th. Uh, this is where we teach you to use Excel, Power Query, Power BI together to build incredible solutions. Uh, it has over 40 hours of training and coaching, 46 hours of live Ask Ken sessions where you can ask me absolutely anything. Uh, access to the recording archive, you get a free copy of Monkey Tools Pro license, free copy of my book, all kinds of stuff that goes into this. It's a fantastic program uh, that will really teach you to get a lot more out of your uh, data sources and solutions. So uh, if you're interested, you should check that out. The link is here. And all of these links are already uploaded in the PDF version that is up on the Meetup site. If you are not at the stage where you're ready to kick you know, Power Query and Power Pivot, maybe you've got other people in your organization that could use some Excel training to really sort of lay that analytical groundwork. Uh, we also have a program called the Excel Fundamentals Bootcamp where we cover formulas and data visualization, Power Query, pivot tables, uh, those kind of things. Uh, again, it also has access to the Ask Ken sessions, lots of training there and whatnot. Uh, if you're interested, you can check out the link here um, to see when this one uh, is going. This one again kicks off another kickoff date of April 10th as well. Um, this meetup, along with all meetups, is recorded and will be hosted on the Skillwave YouTube channel. As soon as I have the chance to actually get the production done on this, which is usually within 24 to 48 hours, uh, but maybe Monday morning, depending on how things go, I will post about in the meetup site. You will be notified so that you can actually go and rewatch the, the uh, content at your uh, leisure. We also have on the Skillwave YouTube channel a series of monkey shorts videos, less than three minutes of technical content end to end. Uh, last week's episode that we're featuring is a creating disconnected fact tables, an essential uh, thing that you should know about if you're building data models inside Excel, um, also in Power BI, to be honest with you, uh, as well as how to keep organized with your measure folders in Power BI as well. So some really quick little bite-sized snippets there, and there's an entire playlist available at our Skillwave YouTube channel. 
The final slide that I want to throw out here is if you enjoy the content on this meetup and you've got some cool things that you would like to share, we love new speakers. Just fill out this survey and we'll get in touch with you and we'll get you on our stage. And as a matter of fact, I believe that's how Tim actually is uh, working tonight. He's, he looked at this and said, hey, cool, I want to do this. So real world, real life, guys, this is exactly what we do. And that's it for me. Joseph, I think it's your turn. We'll turn it over to Let, you, my friends. Let's do it. Thanks, Ken. Uh, you bet. Let me rearrange my screens and we will get started. And da, 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 da. Awesome. All right. Um, thanks, Ken. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to another month of uh, what's new in Power BI, although so far this month, and we're only at the 21st, um, nothing is new in Power BI in terms of a new feature release and the blog post that accompanies it. Um, it may have come out within the last couple hours or a little bit earlier today, but um, nothing I was able to look at in time for the presentation. So we're going to take a little bit different spin on the what's new in Power BI today. Um, one of the things that I want to look at, and um, I didn't include in my presentation from what was new in Power BI in February, so we're going to dive into that. Uh, and we are going to dive into another, um, it is new in Power BI, it's not within the desktop tool itself, but it's in maybe an extension of the, de of the desktop application looking at PowerPoint. Uh, so with that, why don't we jump into my Power BI demo file. So. Um, Last month, one of the things that we looked at with what's new in Power BI um, was the DAX, uh, the DAX query view. So we have a new fourth view um, within our Power BI desktop application. Um, I was actually looking at some of the new visual calculations in DAX, and we and we looked at the DAX query view as well. Um, but I'm just going to use DAX query view here to look at one of the new functions that's available to us within Power BI. Uh, and so I'm just going to run uh, evaluate on info dot functions. And this was really cool. I actually wasn't really aware of this function before uh, seeing that this is now available in Power BI. Uh, so if I run that query, simple query is running one function. What's really cool is that we get sort of like a data dictionary of all the DAX functions that are available to us. So we can see we have like the date function, date diff function, date value, on and on. We have in the, I don't know, hundreds, yeah, 432 different DAX functions. And we get a description of what it does, which I think is really cool. Um, we have like a library name, an interface name, uh, and way over to the right hand side here, we see if they're uh, using like visual calculations or if they are a visual calculation measure. Uh, or um, function rather. Uh, so we down here towards the bottom, we see that some of uh, the DAX window functions, when there's a one in this visual calculation column and we scroll over, they're available to us to use within visual calculations in Power BI. So this is stuff, um, some of which we saw last month, like running sum, um, offset, moving average, and uh, actually, um, uh, SQL BI put out a blog post explaining how the visual calculations actually work in DAX under the hood, which I would really recommend uh, reading. It was really interesting to see how uh, how sort of the underlying tables made some of these uh, visual calculations possible. Uh, but anyway, just really quick, sort of a quick hit there, just looking at this info functions function that we can see uh, in Power BI in the uh, DAX query view now. Uh, I think it's just cool having like a data dictionary really built into the tool. OK, so with that let's change gears slightly now and let's look at some uh, some new features when it comes to linking our Power BI reports with PowerPoint. Uh, so let's go back into my browser here uh, and we see that we have an improved image mode in the Power BI add in for PowerPoint. Uh, so before we get into what's new, I'm just going to look at sort of what's been possible up to this point using Power BI with PowerPoint. So if I'm just going to go into like a blank presentation here in PowerPoint, we have a title slide, we have a just a content slide, very uninspiring at this point. Uh, but one thing that we've been that we've been able to do for a while now is if I go to in the insert tab on the ribbon, I can insert uh, a Power BI report or something from Power BI. Uh, I'm just going to add this report, like the what's new in Power BI demo file. I can just click into it here. Uh, I can select a page or a specific visual. Uh, here we go. I'm um, just click back off there. Uh, I'm just going to have 
the home page, like the main page um, of the report, hit insert. And just like that, we have a, a live connection to our Power BI report embedded within our PowerPoint, and we have the ability to interact with it. I can look at like these slide bars on our line chart. Um, I can click and like cross filter the visuals on the report. Uh, so, so this is really cool. Uh, I really like the ability to do this. Um, if you can't see the insert Power BI, you may have to go to get add-ins uh, from the add-in store. And if you type in Power BI, oh, and we search it, uh, this Microsoft Power BI, and then you'll be able to, to insert any, uh, any of your reports um, into PowerPoint. Uh, so, so this this has been possible up to this point. We can also approach it a slightly different way. We can actually start in powerbi.com. I've just navigated to the same report. And if we go to export up here on the ribbon, we can export to PowerPoint as either um, an embedded image. So it's just like an image snapshot of our report or embed the live data. We get the same experience that we just saw in PowerPoint. Uh, if I embed live data, uh, da, 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 uh, sorry, if I embed an image rather, we looked at live data. If I embed an image, one setting I think is cool is that we can have the option to export with the current values of the report, or we can export uh, an image of the default values of the report, um, as well as excluding uh, hidden tabs or only exporting like the current page that we're like seeing in our browser. Uh, one thing I like about current values versus default values this comes into play if we do have like a filtered view of our um, report, like maybe I want to zoom in on a specific area of our line chart. Maybe I want to cross filter um, different parts of our report. If this is the view I want, I can just take a snapshot of this and, and export that into um, our, our PowerPoint file. Uh, but if I am just sort of doing some exploratory data analysis and it is the, the whole report like the default view of the report with all the data that I want to export into PowerPoint. Uh, I don't have to go and sort of try and unfilter and unclick everything. Uh, I can go embed an image, default values, export. Uh, and of course it may take a few minutes and hopefully these few minutes don't drag on too much. I might just jump to the next part as it's doing this because as we all know anytime you use Teams to do anything you have to do at least a 4x factor of how long things take. Uh, but anyhow, we get the point. We can link Power, PowerPoint, Power BI. We can start in either or and embed our report within, uh, oh, here we go, within a uh, within our PowerPoint file. Let's, let's just open this new file and get a look. Here we go. We can see that we have like the default view from there. All right, I'm just gonna, I'm just going to close that down. So if we go back to the blog post of what's new for for this month in, in linking these two things and linking PowerPoint and Power BI, uh, if we scroll down, we have uh, some new view modes native within PowerPoint. And um, we have the, the live view, uh, which I'll go back and review in just a second. And then we have a public snapshot um, and then just a snapshot. So up until this point, live data um, has been sort of like the default. This is what we've we've seen already, where we can interact with our data. It's a live connection to our report, uh, and we have the ability to like show and hide um, the filter pane. We can use AI to automatically get insights from from our report with like this um, smart narrative summary, uh, including the ability to paste it on the slide. I'm not going to do that. Uh, but down here in the bottom left hand corner now, um, where it says what's new or under the, the report title, we have this drop down. So live data again is default, it's that live connection. We have the, the option from within PowerPoint now to select snapshot. So it's just an image of our Power BI report to, to be in our, our PowerPoint file. So if I hit snapshot, we can see this is just turned into an image um, and I can't click on it anymore. And rather than try and resize it, I'll just undo that. Uh, but one thing I think is cool is we can go back and forth from a snapshot where it's just an image like this back to a live connection of our data um, where I can interact with it again. Um, and the last option, similar to snapshot, is a public snapshot. So snapshot and public snapshot operate, they're really similar. The only difference is that when it comes to privacy levels of um, your Power BI report. So with a snapshot, 
um, users need to have access to the report, access to the underlying data in order to actually just see the image in PowerPoint. Uh, whereas a public snapshot, if I select that, then it just becomes an image that anyone, uh, whether they have access to that Power BI report or not, will be able to see an image um, of the report within the uh, PowerPoint deck. And th this actually sort of goes hand in hand with another privacy um, update that came out this month. Uh, if I just open uh, a new PowerPoint, um, or one that I'd saved before, rather. Um, previously saved report, very descriptive title, again, quite uninspiring. Uh, but you notice that when we see the, the thumbnail of slide two here, I can't actually see the report. It just has sort of like this little placeholder icon. Uh, and this is another privacy setting, whereas previously, um, anyone could see in the thumbnail a little preview of the of what the Power BI report looked like. Now, the first time I open it and when I click on this, it actually does a security check, if you will. It checks my credentials. Am I able to see the report? And only at this point does it pop up um, and become available in the thumbnail uh, once it uh, has a little bit more time to render. Uh, but anyhow, that was um, some of my new favorite features from, from last month and then from this month. We looked at uh, cool DAX function that we can run in the uh, DAX query view in the Power BI desktop app to see a data dictionary of all our DAX functions, including uh, some of the ones that help drive the visual calculations that we looked at last month. Uh, and then we did a little bit of a, of, I guess it can't be a deep dive if you do it in 10 minutes, but a deep-ish dive, a, a shallow dive into PowerPoint and Power BI, how we can link the two things uh, and some of the new updates uh, that have come out this month for that experience. Uh, so with that, I want to say uh, thanks to Ken. Thank you for everyone for listening. And I'm really excited to pass it back to, to Tim to learn about or more about Power Automate, Power Apps, Power BI, and all the really cool uh, out-of-the-box things that we can do with there. So thanks Before for you go, and... Joseph, before oh, you go, okay. um, sure. thanks for, for doing this. We do have one question here for the Power BI embedded in PowerPoint. Uh, if the PowerPoint yeah. is shared with somebody else, what's the licensing requirements? Oh, good question. Licensing requirements. <laughs> uh, I, That's why I didn't answer it. Yeah, I'm to be off the top of my head. I'm not sure. I would have. I would have. To, I would have to look. My my guess is that the reader, if they wanted to interact, would need a Power BI Pro license based on the way Excel works with Power BI integration and whatnot. That would oh. not surprise me at all. But uh, okay. if it doesn't, then it's a bonus, right? So yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry to throw that one back at you. That's, That's uh, all good. Yeah, it's all you. good. <laughs> all right, no worries. Anyhow, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Um, as always, fantastic uh, quick summary of what's new. Um, and now it's my pleasure to uh, welcome Tim Weinstapel to our show to uh, to go and talk a little bit about uh, Power Automate and our Power BI here. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, there's some chat and chatter going on back and forth about the weaponizing of PowerPoints and, and whatnot, which is kind of amusing to me. I love my PowerPoint used correctly. It's great. Um, anyhow, uh, let's turn it over to uh, Tim. Uh, just for reference, uh, Tim and I were talking before this started. So as far as questions go today, uh, fire them into the chat. I will um, attempt to find logical places to break into Tim's presentation to interrupt and ask. Uh, outside of that, I know Tim's got a couple of breaks planned where we can actually catch up on questions as well. So. Um, Floor is yours, Tim. Great. Uh, I'm a little worried because I'm going to start with a PowerPoint. So. <laughs> I know. That, that's always right, the problem when my, people uh, start hating on PowerPoint. <laughs> let me get my, uh, my screen here. Let me... All right. Can you see my screen, Ken? I can. All right. Screen. All right. So uh, first of all, thanks, everybody, for coming. And again, my title, I am going to be talking about Power BI with Power Apps and Power Automate, siblings that actually get along. So if you have any kids, hopefully yours get along. And give me one second, I'm just trying to get the chat up here just in case I can see it off my side here. Um, let me jump into things. So uh, quick thing about me, I'm not gonna read this, uh, just um, the one thing I do say is I've been using Power BI and the Power Platform now for a number of years, and I am really excited about, I like to really look into integrating Power BI with other applications. So, you know, Power Automate, Power Apps, um, which when uh, I'm hoping what I can show here today is where you can take what you would see in, say, a you know, a good report and actually add some additional functionality. So. Uh, enough about me. Let's jump over to a quick um, outline. So I do want to, what I'm going to do is talk about how you can integrate Power BI with, uh, I'm going to start with Power Automate, and then I will also, I'm going to switch over to Power Apps. So 
Um, that's going to be the order here. If you're not familiar with Power Apps or Power Automate, they are part of the Power Platform like Power BI. Power Automate is, like it says here, for automating tasks, and I'm going to show some examples. And then Power Apps is all around editing data, creating data, deleting data, so forth. So when you start to combine them, you really can add some cool functionality. And I'm hoping to show a little bit of that today. All right, I'd always like to give an example because I, what I have found talking to folks is when you talk about, you know, hey, there's great things you can do with these applications. I tend to find that when you show people, it's like, oh, wow, that's really, that that gives me some more ideas. So I wanna give a, a case study here. So kind of set the stage. So right now I manage a team and this is hypothetical, but again, I'm, I manage a team of projects. So I have to oversee project managers. Uh, I have created this really cool Power BI report because I want to manage, or I want to monitor the statuses of all these projects. So here are some common tasks I have to do, right? I got to email project managers for status updates. I'm using SharePoint for a lot of, you know, I have, I have documents, um, so I'm, I'm tracking some SharePoint metadata. Um, I, I populate Word documents. I'm unfortunately not going to cover that today, although that's another task that can be done. Um, and I'm, I always have to reach out to my project managers, right, to get status updates. So that's kind of like set the stage. Let me switch now over to my report. Um, so here is my report and um, nothing fancy. So, but I've got a button, a bunch of buttons on here that I'm gonna walk through some examples. So here is the report that I, I monitor on a regular basis. So you can see the list of projects. I have, you know, project name, some standard project information, who's the project manager. Uh, the status and some comment text. So, and we're going to kind of go through a few of these. So, the first thing I want to do, integrating Power Automate. That's what I want to cover now is some of the things that you can do. Now, I'm going to start with the easiest thing, and that is a refresh button. So, if you're if you've not actually worked with Power Automate and Power BI. Creating a refresh button is one of the easiest things to do because it's simply one one step here and I can push this button. It's triggered the refresh. If I jump over to my uh, thing, if I catch it in time, you'll notice right here, it's refreshing the semantic model. So boom, it's done and it's it's refreshed then. Now, all that button does is trigger the refresh. Um, and I'm gonna come back to that later. And I'm actually gonna show how I created this um, after I go through some of my examples. Um, that's that's okay. That's a that's a nice little thing to have. But let's get to my next thing. Now, this next task is something I probably ex anticipate a lot of folks run into. So I've got my my list here, and I'm going to switch to past due. So I can see here, I have seven projects that are past due. There's the project managers, and I want to get an update on these. So as a normally, what I would do is I would go to my email. Uh, I would email them, so I would, you know, send Larry an email, and then Paul, and so on. Maybe I, maybe I go over here and I, you know, I export the data to Excel, and then maybe send it out as a group. Uh, but again, it's a lot of manual tasks that I'm having to do. But by adding in some Power Automate, I can really automate this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I just I want to reach out to all seven of these uh, projects. And I'm going to go ahead and push this button. And if it will work, there it goes. So it's triggering. Now, what it's doing is Power Automate is sending all those emails. I'm having those emails come to me and I'm hearing the dings and now they are coming in. So let me jump over to my mail and here they all are. So these would be the emails that would go out to each individual. And if I go ahead and click on it, you could see that I've got the project. Uh, the name here, there's my project manager, and I've added in all of this data dynamically. So as I scroll through each of these, you know, these emails, they are pulling in all of that information that's tied to the report. So I didn't have to do that. I built that all into the flow and customized that. Now, um, if I go back to these emails, that's a great thing to do with Power Automate. Um, but you know, I I, I want to spruce up my my emails a little bit. 
Um, you know, maybe I want to add some, you know, some HTML, some if you're familiar with like HTML coding or cascading style sheets or something. Um, I want to actually kind of make the emails look a little better. So if I I've got another example of additional things like you can do in Power Automate. So here's an example of an email where I've sort of added some additional, you know, colors. So I made a table here and um, you know, I could because some of these project managers have multiple projects. I could have just lumped everything into one table and then made it a little bit more cleaner. I've included, say, a hyperlink here, um, an image. So if you're a Pokemon fan, I believe this is uh, Pikachu. But the point being here is by using Power Automate, I could do all this and I could even do it dynamically. Like if I wanted to have different um, images or information based on the information that's within my report that can all be pulled in so all of that can be done with power automate by integrating that into power bi and i'm going to take i see a couple of things here but uh i'm going to pause ken any quick uh con um comments uh, one quick comment. Someone says one can also email a list of errors and data uh, back to the user responsible with the data entry. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and we're going to get to. I'm going to. I'm going to. When I get to Power Apps, I don't know if I'll touch on that. But again, the the capabilities that you could do with this, because you know you got data from Power BI, automation functionality from Power Automate, and then when you get into Power Apps, and I'll show that in a second. Um, it is just really, really gives you a lot of opportunity. So, um, so that's that's the my my power. That's that example. Uh, I'm going to jump to another example that I I want, and then I'm going to go to this one over here. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'm going to kind of show real quick how to like get started with this, and I'll I'll give a, maybe a one or two examples. So I have another task that I have to do, and I'm going to start with I'm going to switch over to in progress. Now. As the project, as the leader of this team, one of my roles uh, is that these projects need a, you know, a, maybe say it's a startup document and I have to review them and approve them. So normally what I would do is let me go over to my SharePoint site. So here is my document library. You know, here they are. I'm going to have to open it up, click on each one. And let's say I, I review this and I need to change, you know, I want to change the, you know, I need to change the project scope. This is just this is too much. I, I'm lazy, so let me jump back to my report. Well, here what I've got is I've actually got a hyperlink built into my report because I'm pulling all this information is in SharePoint, so I'm pulling it into my report. I go ahead and click on it, and there's the you know there's the the scope. That's a great scope of work, and um, this looks good. I, I like it. It's you know very simple and clean. I'm going to improve this one right here. In fact, let, let's say I just go through all three of them. I'm going to select all three of these. So I see three selected and let's go ahead and prove them. So I've done that. It's triggered. Let me jump over to my SharePoint and let's just refresh it. And you'll see now that I've, I've went ahead and I've marked them as updated. So done all that because I'm using Power Automate behind the scenes to update my SharePoint um, information. So again, in my example, I've done, uh, you know, I've got three documents here, but let's say this is like a regular thing that you're doing. Um, so again, now let me show you kind of how easy it is to do this. And I'm going to jump over to my desktop file. Let's see here, make sure I get the right one. Yep, I'm here. So it's really pretty straightforward is, um, I've got a, there's the, the button, the Power Automate uh, for Power BI button. I go ahead and click on that. And it already does give you some directions. It tells you you could add data. And that is all of the data that you want to pass to your flow. Um, you actually don't have to add any data. So for refresh, for example, right? Let, I'll just recreate that one because that's probably, that's the easiest. Um, I don't have to add any data. And I could just go here to edit. Now, what it'll do is it'll open a Power Automate through Power BI. So if you've done Power Automate before and you've gone to it, you're 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 basically going through and accessing Power Automate here. Um, you can see I've got a list of flows that I've created and I can just go here from new and I'm going to do an instant cloud flow. And 
it already puts in my trigger. Now, the first item that you do is a trigger, and that's what kicks off your flow. And I can go here and add a step and search for a connector. So I will search for Power BI, and that'll pull up all of the actions that I can do. I can scroll down here, go here quickly, refresh a data set. And then it's just a matter of choosing your workspace and your data set. So really easy to do. You save it. Um, I'm going to avoid this step and then you'll apply it. You can save it and then apply it to your back to your um, to your button and then it's applied. And that's uh, that's fairly easy. If I look at the, and then what, the other thing I'll mention is uh, I'm actually going to jump to this email one. Uh, and this is a quick tip. I always like to throw quick tips. I have a flow applied to this one. Um, and the one downside, and I hope somebody from Microsoft is listening in on this conversation, there's no indication as to what flow is attached. I, I wish they would add like a check mark. That would be really cool. But it is this one. I just happen to know that. But be aware that they don't tell you which one is applied. But when I go to this, and again, um, the, the, the cool thing is that all of these fields that I've pulled in are the dynamic fields that I've added from my report. So I've added all these fields. It's being come, it's being brought over and I can do all this. I can do formatting and and so on. So all of that dynamic capability is um, is there. And that's really, you know, and again, I got to save and apply. Um, I'm going to pause one second. My dogs are at the door. They want to come in and they want to see this as well. So let's open the door. Come on, guys. Hurry up. The crowd is waiting. All right, sorry about that. They get, they get, uh, they love to see the Power BI stuff. So, so in a nutshell, and again, I'm, I'm kind of going through this quickly because I do want to jump to Power Apps, and I really want to give more of an example. But it's this is really, um, there is just so much more capability. Um, I do see some comments fly, um, uh, come and Ken, any questions popping up? Or are they just comments? No, nah, general general comments. Uh, oh, no, wait, there's a question. Um, so refreshing data with Power Automate, how can one know when the data ref uh, has actually finished refreshing in Power BI other than checking the refresh history? Um, as far as I know, it's checking the refresh history. One downside that I have found is when you do the refresh, what you are doing is you are just triggering, you are just triggering the refresh. So if your Power BI, just like if you were to, if I were to go to the data model, uh, let me just jump back over to it. If I go over to the data model and I do the refresh here, if there's an error and the little triangle here pops up, you don't, um, I'm not, I have not seen a way yet to have Power Automate flag that error. It's all it's doing is pushing the button. So that is one thing to be cognizant of when you're doing. Um, using Power Automate, and for uh, and you'll see like this one for some reason has taken a few minutes. So, all right, let me jump back to the report. All right, so I've gone through that now, uh, and I did talk about the. Um, let me switch back to my report here. Yeah, so um, the, the the point being, and and what I have found too is working in Power Automate and working in Power Apps, I tend to find Power Automate has got a, an easier learning curve. Um, at least for me, Power Automate was, I mean, it was easy to get in there. They've got templates, they've got examples. Power Automate ten, tends to be, in my experience, a little bit more uh, of a learning curve with coding and so forth. So, but, so this one, I think, is really easy to jump in. And then, like, sending emails is really just a couple of steps. So... There are a couple of caveats that I always like to um, advise folks when working in Power Automate, and this is through some trials and tribulations that I have experienced. The first one is the uh, the button, um, and I'm gonna let me jump back to my report. Um, let's say I'm looking at this report and I'm I'm looking at you know past due, and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm gonna reach out to Paul. I want I want to let Paul know. I'm showing seven records, but I, I want to just reach out to Paul. I'm here. I've got it highlighted. I got one record. And then I, I'm in a rush, so I accidentally click out. Click out. I, I push the button, and it's triggered. Well, the problem is you push the button, and you push the button. I mean, there's no – that that flow is triggered. Um, so there's no confirmation. It would be great if it said, you know, are you sure? But 
with Power BI, of course, when you pull out the magic of bookmarks, um, I've got an example here where I can um, sort of the similar look, but if I click here, I have a little pop up that pops up. You know, I've got this box here, and now it's saying, "Hey, you're you're going to send seven emails. Are you sure you want to continue?" And I can quickly look at that and say, "Oh no, I didn't want that," and I could cancel. So, you know, again, a couple of things to be aware of, but again, there you can then build it in. Um, so that's the the one uh, first caveat I wanted to mention. And I'm going to jump back to my PowerPoint because I have a few more. I, I covered this first one and I'm going to cover the second one because this is the most important one. I think there's one takeaway. Be aware of what data is being sent to your flow. Let me give you an example. I'm going to jump back to um, and I jump back to my file. So let's say I have this file here and I'm going to filter it. I'm going to not filter this file and I'm thinking, oh, great. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a filter in this table. And I'm going to show show the status of delayed. Great, I've only got two delayed. I'm going to push this button. However, because I've applied the filter here, if I go ahead and open this up and I convert this to a table, that's all the data being sent to my flow. So be very careful of, of what data is happening because let's say I wanted to send two and let's say this was a row of 10,000. And and certainly, um, you know, that that I have seen that happen where you have you send out something. So um, and I've also in that case, I've also built into the flow some preventative measures, like if it's more than a certain number of records, you know, it it it, it cancels and doesn't do it and so forth. So, again, these are some things to be aware of. So I'm going to. Jeanette and let me. Jump back to my slide and um, um, the second, this third one. So in my example, you can work directly in your flow from Power. Um, you can go to your flow from Power Automate from the Microsoft, you know, the Power Platform. And you can you can work on the flow just as if you were there versus going and let me switch back over versus going and editing it here. Um, it'll be it'll work pretty much the same the one difference to be aware of is and i'm gonna let me edit one so i could go to power automate directly and i could access this flow and i can make changes the only thing that won't be available is the dynamic fields here all of these dynamic fields so if i click on one and let me let me show you what i mean by these dynamic fields is um let me go down into the subject line so I can see why are they not showing up? Um, because my, all of my dynamic fields here should be that are available. You'll see project manager status and so on. Unless they are, let me see if they're missing. New step here. Let me just do a compose and see if because the dynamic fields should be showing up. And I think they're not showing up simply because, oh, there they are. Um, yeah, no, they're not. Um, anyways, the point being is with your dynamic fields from Power uh, from Power BI that you've sent over, they aren't available. Um, they won't be available. You won't actually see them when you are in the main Power, um, Power Automate thing. So it's just something to be aware of. Um, but like, for example, Let's say I wanted to just change that. If I just wanted to change like the text of the email, I, you know, I wanted to change, you know, add some additional. If I wanted to go here and I just wanted to add thank you kindly, you know, that would be fine and so on. So just be aware of it. And I'm going to jump back to, let's see here. Um, and then the last one, uh, this is another one that is another thing to be aware of is. If I uh, all flows are saved in the default Power Platform environment. So if you work in the Power Platform, you can create environments um, as well as like solutions and you can have a, you know, like a sandbox environment, a production environment and so forth. But when you are creating these flows and again, I'm going to switch back to my if when I create all these flows and I go to like edit one. 
all of these flows that will be listed here, these are all saved in a the default environment that is going to be there. Um, from what I have read, Microsoft is supposed to be changing this and allowing environments, which I will I am like anxiously awaiting because if you are working in Power Apps and, and other Power Automate, it's great to wrap things in solutions. But um, again, something to be aware of. I'm going to pause there because um, and see if there are any questions around Power Automate. So we've got um, a comment uh, in this case here from uh, Anthony who uh, suggested that you can actually create a subscription for your uh, for your um, report. So when the refresh com uh, completes, you get an email, um, at which point you can then take action on that. So it's a handy uh, potential tip that could be useful. Oh, that is great. Thank you. The, and the cool thing about that is if you did that, like, Again, then you can also build in Power Automate for emails that are coming into your inbox. Again, a lot of capability to do. So uh, I actually appreciate that as well because um, I did not even think about that and or be aware of that. So there you go. Uh, cool. Hey, uh, quick question um, for you, Tim. Uh, we're we're seeing on our side a lot. The screen is going pink on this. It's almost like it's it's having a challenge uploading um, the information to Teams because you know Teams is Teams. Um, I'm wondering if maybe we should be killing your camera to try and dedicate more upload to the actual presentation. Yeah. Let me turn my camera off. Um, is that hopefully help? it'll help? Uh, I mean, I still see the pink right now, but let's let's run with it and see what happens. It's just kind of an Do you see thing. my my Power BI screen at all, or is it just pink? No, I can see the Power BI screen. It's like it gets a nice pink overlay. So it's it's like Barbie got at it to you know make it prettier. Wow. Interesting. So, yeah, it's strange. I'm gonna put it down to a Teams issue because if in doubt, blame Teams first, right? <laughs> so. All right. Well, good. Thanks for calling that out. Um, no. Worries. Any other questions on I was um, on Power Automate or are we good? Uh, one more question just came in. Is there a way to change the name of who sends the triggered email from the Power Automate? Great question. Um, that, that is another great question. Um, let me go ahead and jump to, uh, I know I'm probably killing my flows here, but uh, let me switch to, Actually, it won't really matter. I'll just jump to a flow. Let me go to a flow. When you are working in Power Automate, um, yes, it is. it does matter because what's um, happening behind the scenes is there are what's called connections. And these are going to be, so if I edit a, a flow, I'm going to go to the flow. With many of these steps, uh, and it's the same with refreshing a, uh, like a Power BI data set, you know, uh, what's going to happen is um, you're going to see up in the corner here, a lot of times I'm going to go to send the email. If I click on this ellipsis, it's going to talk. It's going to say that who's using the connection. So in this example, this step right here is connected to my account. So the email that will be sent will come from my account, from whoever has this connection. So if I were to add a refresh step, um, I'm going to actually go back to the uh, refresh one. Um, because I'm going to continue this uh, connections and then I'll get back to the um, a suggestion around it. Let me go back to see if I hit refresh. I do this step here. This is another thing to be aware of. Like, so here's my refresh step and um, it's going to use. So that's the, the workspace and the data set. So this is using my connection. Now I have run into a case where I was using an account um, that did not have a pro license so it was not able and it, so the it, even though the I, I created the flow if I, you know if you have access to multiple accounts the, it's this it's basically think about this as like an account so it's got to have the access to um like what you're doing uh whether it's refreshing a data set and then when it's sending an email it's going to come from that that email address so that is a great question and so connections become very key when you are working in power automate uh, it's the same with licensing because with power automate a num there are some um some actions that are that you require like a premium license so again it really gets into the the connections that are being done so um it's a great question um one other thing that like we like I'm sure a lot of us we work collaboratively in you know our organization so you might be working with different people and you know you can start to have different or um, different connections and it just adds to some of the complexity all right i hope tara i hope that answered that question for you 
Okay. All right. Uh, give uh, Ken any improvement on my screen, or is it still that pinkish color? No, I think it actually seems to be better now. No more, uh, no more pinkish flashing, flashing in. So yeah, let's right. uh, let's go with it. Okay, I am gonna jump. So that is the Power Automate. I could spend a lot more time. There is a lot of other cool things like populating documents, and I mean, then we start getting into all of the other connectors out there it really offers up a lot of cool opportunity because remember you've got power you've got your power um your data from your power bi report so now i'm going to jump now to power apps and this is the next thing i'm going to do now power apps is and i want to jump to my let's see, jump to my thing here um the cool thing about power apps is again like i said before it's you know, it's all about data entry and there's different ways you can approach this so uh, the first one i did as an example i'm just going to hit this one real quick is you can just embed an app so if you have an, a, a standalone app uh this i think is a um uh, of course it's taken a few seconds to load i think this is like a a survey request or something this has nothing to do with my power bi report it's just an app i could open this up myself um but I, you know, and there it goes. It's a employee engagement survey and I could go through here and I could use it with my with my thing. And so, you know, but this is boring. I don't want to mess with this. What I want to get back to is I want to go back to my page here when I reached out to project managers. Now, I'm sending them, I'm using Power Automate to send these emails. The problem is, you know, they got to now go into my into this SharePoint list and let me pull up that SharePoint list. I have this SharePoint list where I have these comments. So, you know, I'm telling them, hey, you know, go here, add in your 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 project ID, add in your comments. But of course that I again, I want to make it easier for them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a I'm going to embed a power app now so the first approach I'm going to do is and this is great if you um if you this is great works great with SharePoint lists I know it, it can work with Excel as well um but like if you have a SharePoint list you can go right up to integrate and there is an option to create an app and what power apps will do is take your your SharePoint list and create a three screen app so it, I'm, I'm not going to do it here because it'll take a few minutes um, but and I've already done it so I'll show that one but what it'll do is it'll go ahead and it'll create that app you can save it and then I can come in here and I can embed it and I will um, show that in a second but I've already done that where I have my I've got a, a power app right here and I've, I've selected it and you can see here's the here's the list it's a little, little hard a little small to see here um, but I can see, oh, I got this project 107. This project has issues. And I can see these three comments. So I can go in here and I can actually interact with this app. I can go here and let me say I can click on this and then I can edit this. And this app is fully, um, you know, in a, I can add a new comment and, you know, make them type it, uh, you know. And of course, I, I, you know, I got, you know, I'm sloppy. So I, you know, typed something wrong um, again. This is a great, quick and easy way to get get going. And, you know, you could be up and running in, in a few minutes. But um, I want to go a step further and I want to integrate this with my actual data. So let me go to my third. This is the third example. And this is the one that is much better. So I've got the same view. I've got all my projects, but now you'll see I've got an app over here and I've got uh, seven records showing and it says you must select a specific record to enable app. I've, I've created that so it warns me. I now click here, um, and of course it says getting your data, um, takes a second, but there it's already loaded up. There's P107 and there's my comment. I can go ahead and um, issues resolved. And I can edit the record. And now that record is edit edited. If I if I move away and I move back, it's actually updating my SharePoint list as we speak. So I can go here and as I click on it, it is actually connecting right to my data. Uh, cool thing is the way I'm setting this up is, OK, let me go down to P114. There are no comments. So um, if I do that and you'll see, oh, the button now has changed to add new and it's already pre filled in. So I could say I need help. And I could go ahead and add it. 
let's jump over to my SharePoint list. And if I refresh this, just because it's got to reload the page, uh, might take a second here. There it is. So you'll see I'm interacting with that now. And that's the great thing about this interaction is I can join the two and then provide that user experience to make it easier. Um, and then again, now the thing to be, keep in mind is you're noticing that the comments here are not changing. And that's because, of course, uh, this is I've imported data, the data. When I refresh the data again, it should show up. So just as a test, let me jump back to my button because I've created this button and I will trigger this. And if all goes well, when I refresh this page, the comments will be there. Um, and then that's it's just a great way now to provide that sort of capability um, for the integration between the two. Um, I'm going to pause because just in case I've missed any comments or questions. You've got a couple of questions in the uh, in the chat here on this one. Uh, can I also embed Power Apps apps that I created with Teams? Um, OK, I'm going to give a, a so I'm going to give an answer and, and I'm going to kind of show this. Um, when you create a, a, an app, the, the integration between the two, and let me I'll tell you what, let me jump over and see if, I'm gonna go ahead and jump to a, a new page. Um, I'm just gonna get, a, okay, there we go, cool. We, we got some real wild pink and green that time, but we are seeing Power BI again, so. Okay, um, to embed an app, there is, right next to the Power Automate, there is the Power Apps for Power BI and you can go ahead and do that. Now this one does require a field. So you do have to add a field or fields. And what happens is whatever fields you add are then transitioned to your power apps. And I'm gonna see if I could do this. Let me just add in a quick, uh, uh, and I'm just gonna add some random fields here. Um, now it's gonna say, choose an app or create new. Um, the and this is where I'm going to say I'm a little bit unsure, but in order to the big thing is, is what will happen? I'm going to create a new one uh, and it's going to say go to Power App Studio and it's going to open up Power Apps. It, now, this will send me over to Power Apps. What it's going to create, though, is what's called a control called Power BI integration. Uh, I'm going to skip this. OK, it's going to create this right here. Power BI integration, and that is a control. And what that ends up being is your data container. Um, I'm actually going to do it slightly different. And Ken, how are we on time? I want to do a quick time check. You're good. Keep uh, going. Do what you need okay. to do. All right. I'm actually going to delete this because, um, and I was going to mention this, but I'm going to mention it now. Um, the integration, normally what I do is I'm going to, let me jump back and I'm going to go slow because let things go through. Normally, I do all of my development in Power BI Desktop. You know, I'm adding my Power uh, my Power Automate flow. I'm adding my Power App over here and doing all of that. Okay. However, for some reason, this integration between Power BI and Power Apps does not seem to be working when you go from Power BI Desktop to Power Automate. And I'm gonna so I'm gonna do it from and, and I know I also saw a forum post on this as well. So what I'm going to do is uh, but I found a workaround by if you take a published report and you go through and you um, you edit it here because you I can go ahead and now I, I can edit this this published report. If I edit this again. I have all these visuals. I can go up here and I can add in. Let me add in a new page. And I can go ahead and do the visual, and it seems to be working um, much better. Now, what I'm not going to do for purposes of this session, because it would take too long, is go through all of the steps of doing this integration. However, I do have a YouTube video. I just put it out on Monday that it takes about half an hour where I do go through it. But I do want to just kind of show at least a start of it. And you can see, I'm. Uh, let me select some of these fields, and I'm going to create a new one here. So again, I published my report i'm editing it in the the published report when i go to then add in my power app 
and I go through this and it takes a few seconds here to get ready. What you'll notice is this, a gallery will pop up with the data and you'll see the data. If you do this through Power BI Desktop, this gallery does not pop up. So what ends up happening is this Power BI integration control is being created, but it is not being populated with data. So again, if I go to the gallery um, and I go to, I think it's a little bit of a slow here, because uh, yeah, it's gonna it's taking a second here to load, but when the gallery pops up, it'll actually reference my, you know, my Power BI integration, and you can see all of the, here's all of the some of the fields that have pulled in. So, um, and then from here is where I would start building out my integration. And it, and again, it, it does take a little bit of time. There's there is a little bit of coding involved, but I will say I've worked with folks that are brand new to Power uh, Power apps, and you know, after going through and you know, kind of walking through it. It is not, it doesn't take all that much. Um, and, but it, it's just, there's a, this does a, require, in my opinion, a little bit more than say Power Automate. Um, and it's, I think I'm getting a lag here because the uh, the thing is not loading up, but. Uh, while you're waiting for it, uh, the next question that you had was, uh, is there a way when your app is submitted or has submitted a record that it can actually trigger a page refresh on Power BI? So yeah, what you could do is um, you could build that into a flow. For example, in your app, um, in, in in my app, and if, let me uh, let me actually jump to. I'm going to edit my Power app. I'm going to let me close this out. I'll leave this site. Go here. Let me actually edit this. I could yes, you could do that. You could. Um, and I'm going to jump over to my Power app. This is the one that's been built. And you could build this in. And so, like, for example, when Power Apps, you can add a you could add a flow that after it submits the form, it kicks off a, re, a, a flow that will refresh your 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 Power BI, your you know, your data set. Um, and I and I got I've got a little warning screen here. Uh, let me let me disable this. So in my, I have a button here, I just have it where it submits the form, but you could certainly add in where it now, it kicks off a flow. So Power BI, I mean, sorry, Power Auto, um, Power Apps can also trigger a Power Automate flow and then do that. So yeah, you could certainly do that. Um, where I would caution you is, let's say you've got people that are adding in records one after another, you're going to then trigger trigger the refresh and it's going to be triggered again, which means some of those flows are going to cause errors, but it is possible to do. All right. Um, other, any other questions that have popped up? Nope, that's it so far. So, and um, so um, like, again, like I said, I, I don't necessarily want to go deep through all of the coding in here, although it really ends up being, I just have a simple form. And I do walk through all of the steps, but the main thing is this Power BI, Power BI integration, uh, this control up here. And I think now that this one's loaded, uh, let's see if this will, if I can just kind of reference one of those. If I go to the item here. Uh, yeah, you're gonna see this Power BI integration control, and then there's a, there's a dot data reference to it. And like when I click on this, I can actually see like, this is basically, it's like a table, a container, a table um, that is then passing that data between Power BI and Power um, uh, Power Apps. Um, and then the other thing I do, and again, it's, uh, it's something that, let me jump back to my report, is because in my application, and I made just a very simple form, um, I, you know, I, I've got a little warning box that pops up here when there's more than one record selected. So a little bit of user experience. Uh, again, depending on how your app is built, uh, and this is a very simple app, you could make it uh, more complex and you know more advanced. And and you know, again, it's all getting back to passing data from Power BI to your app, which makes that available in your app. And then if you want to integrate any automation, again, all three of these uh, applications they play so nice together. 
So. Um, and like I said, I do cover I, I'm I'm starting to cover a lot of these all of these flows that like the flows I've talked about, the 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 power apps. I do have a YouTube thing that where I will walk through this, you know, the, in detail, including the coding and to hopefully make it, um, you know, at least show the approach I've taken on it. So. Um, and I think that, that I'm going to pause on there. Any other questions on power apps or even power automate? Doesn't look like anything else has come in. No. All right. I feel like I went a little quicker than I had planned on it, but I always like to pause for any questions. Um, and I am going to, I don't know, Ken, if, if I'm allowed to at least just reference, um, if I go back to my thing here, I do have just a couple of, um, you know, again, I've got a bunch of videos about in these, in these integrations to kind of, whether it's Power Automate or Power, um, you know, Power Apps, and I'm going to continue adding more. So I am definitely, uh, if you, you know, feel free to check them out. Uh, if you want, reach out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, we'd lo always love to connect and talk all of this integration. So, um, so with that, I mean that pretty much wraps up my piece of the of the discussion. So, awesome. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it, Tim. Um, if there are any other questions, uh, by all means, uh, folks, throw them into the chat and uh, and take advantage of the uh, the opportunity to talk to Tim while he's still here. Um, <clears throat> Great stuff, Tim. Appreciate it. Uh, we did have, oh, here's one that came in. Um, joined a bit late. Can we lever leverage adaptive cards to show users uh, how to provide inputs and updates from within Teams rather than log into Power Apps or Power BI? Uh, oh, that's <laughs> an interesting question. Um, you know, Ken, I'll be the first to say, I will rarely will I say no. There's always a way so um, I, I, I like i like to say no when i want to know how to do it because then invariably somebody will come out of the woodwork and go of course you can do that and they'll give you exactly the right steps <laughs> so um yeah that i it, see i've just seen so many cool things with power when you you know either it's a you know power automate or you know uh i don't know that's a good question of course tonight i'll be think i'll be working on it tonight so. There, well, you know what, and and uh, if if you get it, if you get it nailed, there's uh, you know fodder for another meetup, right? <laughs> so all good there. Um, all right. Well, uh, thanks for coming, Tim. I really appreciate you coming and doing this. Uh, thanks for uh, for filling out our form and getting in touch with us. It's great to have you here. Um, hopefully, we can uh, can get you back in future. Um, I don't see any other questions coming into the chat, so I guess we'll wrap it up for now. Um, I will get this video all processed and posted on the YouTube channel. And uh, once I do, I will post about it in Meetup so you get a notification. So if you want to go back and actually uh, rewatch any of it, uh, you can absolutely do so as well as uh, check out all the other uh, recordings of Meetups we have there as well. So thanks very much for coming, everyone. Thanks again, Tim. Thanks, Joseph, for doing our What's New again as well. And um, yeah, we will see you all next time.